Jeff here and welcome back again to the YouTube channel for CarBuyingTips.com where since 1999 we have been both educating and protecting you, the American public, in buying new cars, used cars, leasing, and we have how-to videos. And in today's how-to video, this is the 2016 Corvette Stingray with the Z51 performance package on it. And we're going to show you how to do the oil change on this. Now this is very unique because it has that dry sump pump system. And if you don't follow all of the directions we're going to show you, you're going to run into trouble. And they even warn you about it in the owner's manual, which we know many people don't check. So let's get right into it. to use floor jacks you can drive your car up onto a couple of 2x10 boards to get it off the ground that's as far as you really need to go in order to be able to reach underneath to where the oil plug nuts are okay so here is where you will find your jacking puck also known as a jacking pad so you put it right under the underside here and it's attached to the frame right there at the lift point right where you would scoot the jack underneath so this will protect your panels from potential cracking, which can sometimes... Okay, so just a useful tip here for you. The first thing you want to do is you want to run the engine for a few minutes here just to warm up the oil so that it flows better and that it drains much more completely for you. Okay, so you can see now that we've upticked just over 100 degrees, we're going to turn off the engine. And now we are ready. Okay, so we, we always make sure we're wearing gloves, as we can see here. And we're going to remove the oil cap here, and that will allow vet, better venting for the oil. So it puts air behind the oil there. It's kind of like your plumbing stack system for your house, your plumbing venting. Okay, so as you look under the car there, you can see the blue oil filter there on the right and then there's two of the nuts that you have to undo there these oil plugs here and the one that's on the the left there you can see that one right there that's one of them and that's facing forward and the other one is just to the left of the oil filter and we'll come back here and that's it right there the blue one those two nuts need to be loosened to drain the oil Okay, so there's our oil pan underneath, and as we zoom in here to the plug, you can see it takes a 15 millimeter wrench. Okay, so now that the wrench has loosened the nut there, the rest comes up pretty easily by hand. And again, make sure you're wearing gloves. You get a better grip using the gloves anyway. Yeah, so as you're loosening the nut here, you'll see maybe drops of oil will start to come out and it makes it a little bit slippery too. Interesting. There you go. So there's your oil out draining. So you see how quickly it just comes out too. So you really need to make sure you have that drain pan in place and ready to go, that there's nothing obstructing the hole in the drain pan. Don't forget to remove the plug in the hole if there's one there. Otherwise, you're going to have oil all over your garage floor. And for extra excitement, you can do this over your paver brick driveway. Okay, so now you can see it's starting to trickle down. And remember, this is just the first of two plugs that we need to drain. So there it is dribbling now, doing its Austin Powers impression. Okay, so it looks like it's doing its final few drips down there. Okay, so once you've got it down to this point where it's just dripping, let it go a few more minutes. It may keep dropping forever, so who knows, maybe you just keep going until it slows down to a small amount. And there's your plug. Okay, so now we're going to reattach the plug 
just tightening it in by hand. Okay, so now for the other plug, you use the same 15 millimeter wrench. You reach it up there and loosen it. And once you get it loosened with the wrench, you should then be able to get it going by hand. And then there's the oil coming out there and going into the oil pan. Okay, so the oil is completed draining out and now we're just going to put the plug back in. We will screw it in by hand and then we will use our oil filter wrench and remove the filter there. And remember to be very, very careful not to cross thread it. So if you find any resistance, you better stop and back the plug back out and start all over again. It should go in very, very smooth just like you see it here. Because you do not want to cross thread those. If you do, it's going to be a very expensive repair at the dealership. It can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's the same thing when you change spark plugs too. We always warn people about that. Because if the dealer has to start coming in and reaming new threads, you're going to be in big trouble. It's going to cost a lot of money. Now we're going to use the oil filter wrench here to loosen the oil filter. And we'll put a link down in the description for you to Amazon so you can see what's the exact wrench you should be using. And once you've loosened it significantly with the wrench there, the rest should come out okay with your glove and again I'll keep repeating this is why you want to wear gloves because it does get quite messy so a, a smart tip here for you at this point of time is to do this in stages just like unscrew it slowly a little bit and let a little bit of oil come out and then let some more come out because by the time you're done unscrewing the filter, sometimes they slip out of your hand and they'll splash down below here into the pan. And you don't want that. and you can see a bunch of more oil followed it out as we removed it here. Okay, so you want to make sure the oil filter is sitting in your pan upside down and just let it continue to drain for a while. And we also want to remind you too that before you set this pan underneath the car there to start collecting all the oil, you want to make sure you flip up the vent here, the cap for the vent, because that's how you get air behind liquid so that it will drain effectively in there. And here is the new replacement filter, and we'll put a link to this down in the description for you as well, so you can check this out on Amazon. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take just a little bit of oil here and prime the gasket on the filter here. So this helps give it a little bit better seal there. Okay, so now we're going to attach the new filter. You need to make sure that you don't cross thread this thing. It should spin very, very freely. It might take a little bit. You might have to try a couple of times to get that thread started, but do not cross thread that because it will be a very, very expensive repair for you. So there it is going on there. And we're going to hand tighten it and then you go three quarters of a turn past hand to tighten. Okay, so now we're going to tighten the plug here. And as you know, you know, many car manufacturers have different specs. They'll tell you, you have to tighten this particular nut with a certain number of Newton meters. And so what you want to do here is if you don't have a 
torque wrench, you can still do it. You can just make sure it's on there nice and snug. A lot of people do this all the time without the torque wrenches. You can bet that if you take your car into a regular service shop or oil chain shop, they're probably not using the, the torquing it back down with the manufacturer's recommended spec. Oil filter is tightened down. All right, so here we are now tightening the front plug. All right, so here in the owner's manual, you can see that for this particular engine, the Z51, you fill it with 9.8 quarts. However, due to the, the peculiarities here of this dry sump design here, we have to fill it with a little bit less and then test the level of it before we finalize everything because we want to make sure that we don't pour in too much oil. Okay, so you want to make sure you're replacing it with 5W30 oil or whatever your manufacturer says to use here. Okay, so we'll start by pouring an entire 5 quart jug into the engine. Okay, so on this second jug here, we're going to use the indicator here and we'll try to fill till we have just about four and a half quarts or so. I think we've got it. Okay, now after you pull the funnel out, you secure your oil cap. Okay, so we want to warn you about this because a lot of people don't check their owner's manuals. They think they know everything when they go to do even basic things like an oil change on their car. But as you can see here, the Z51 and the Z06 do not have a standard oil system. These are racetrack ready dry sump engine lubrication systems here. And so they operate differently than a standard engine lubrication system. And it requires this special procedure that you have to do to check the engine oil level here. And you have to follow this closely. They even warn you about that in the owner's manual here. See how it says right there in the middle of the screen, follow this procedure closely. The car sitting there, all of the oil will usually drain more into the dry sump area, not into the main pan. So if you were to check your oil with a dipstick, you will get an inaccurate reading. So that's why they want you to start the engine up here and they give you the procedure right here. They want you to start the engine up here and you have to let it heat up to at least 175 degrees to get an accurate reading. You will not get the correct level reading if you don't do that. And also make sure that the car is on level ground. Okay, so now we just zoom in on the oil temperature there and you let the engine run until it gets up to 175. It should be the third mark. Okay, so now it's very important that you come in and you reset the oil life monitoring system. So the way we reset it is you press and hold the select button. Okay. Okay. So now to get to the oil temperature menu, you just go to the performance menu there. And there it is. there. Alright, so once we turn off the engine, we're now going to set a timer for 5 minutes and 30 seconds because that's how long you have to take your measurement. If you wait too long, you'll have to turn the engine back on again to heat the oil back up because it has to be at 175 degrees minimum. Here it goes. Okay, the engine is off. And we're going to start our timer now. And there we go. So just as the instructions state here, you have to wait between five and 10 minutes after the engine is shut down. So we're in that waiting period right now. We're waiting for the timer to kick down and as soon as it hits down to zero, we can check the oil. It's very strange. It's kind of like NASA waiting for the Apollo mission to come back into the atmosphere. Now that it's been five minutes, we can pull out the dipstick to get the most accurate reading. So we'll wipe it off, we'll put it back in, 
we'll pull it back out again. Okay, so we can barely see it right there, but yeah, we can add a little bit more. Okay, so we warmed up the engine and waited five minutes for it to cool down again, and we're going to do one last check here on the oil level. Because remember, if you add oil like we did, it could change the temperature a little bit. So we want to make sure we had to bring it back up to temperature here to get this accurate reading here. That's right in our target zone there. Well, if you're finding this video useful so far, be sure and click on that thumbs up icon down below that tells us that you like us. And be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as well. And click the little gray bell icon next to it. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you when we upload a new video because you don't want to miss any of our consumer advocate videos on buying new cars and used cars and leasing and avoiding car dealer scams. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.